This week Nvidia released new drivers for some of their graphics cards, notably the 8 and 9 series and the 200 series. If that means nothing to you, it's probably because Nvidia use really stupid naming policies. Anyway, the exciting thing about these is that they enable PhysX on those cards. This is a special type of physics processing that normally has to be carried by your computer's CPU, but thanks to the new drivers, your graphics card can take some of the load. And that enables effects such as these that you're seeing here, really complex fluid dynamics. It's the kind of thing that would normally bring your computer to its knees, but thanks to this new system it can carry on fairly well. I'm running this on an 8800 GT. Now, this isn't quite the same as having a dedicated PhysX card. The dedicated one, all the PhysX card is doing is the physics. It can just dedicate all its time to that. When you put it onto the GPU, the graphics card's having to do the graphics and the physics at the same time. So in some circumstances, it could actually end up with a lower frame rate. Given that only about five people in the world actually bought a PhysX card, this is the best most people will get. If you have one of the newer NVIDIA cards, you'll get a better frame rate, of course. The A800 GT that this is running on is about a year old now, so things have moved on quite a bit. In fact, the newer cards are designed specifically for physics, whereas if you run this on an 8 series, they weren't really intended for this in the first place. The big question, of course, is what does this actually mean for games? Well, imagine these fluid dynamics in a game like Bioshock, where the water could actually move like proper water rather than just the scripted events that happen every so often. In fact, what these new drivers have done, mainly, is made me want someone to go back and remake Bioshock, integrating this new technology. This is another demo involving a rather strange alien. What's special about this guy is the way his skin reacts. It's very malleable and very soft, something which normally is very difficult to simulate on a computer. This would be great for the Combine Advisors in Half-Life 2, for example. But as well as the sci-fi uses, this could be really good just for doing stuff like human skin. Think of, for example, a boxing game. You could have much more realistic interactions there. In this amusingly slapstick cutscene, you somehow trip over the power cord, letting the alien loose. Watch closely as he blobs his way around the room. It's really quite impressive and reminiscent of the brain bug from Starship Troopers. It's not terribly pleasant, but it is quite impressive. Watch carefully around his neck as he moves forward, the way the skin moves up and around over his head. Strangely though, one of the things I found most impressive weren't the alien creatures, but these cloth examples. I think this is because it could apply to so many different types of game. Cloth, after all, shows up in so many different situations, and uh, in the history of computer games it's always been a bit rubbish. Here though, we finally see cloth reacting naturally, and in a nice smooth frame rate. The fun thing about the demo is that you can manipulate the objects, moving them up and down and throwing them about to see how they react to different stimuli. This light cloth, for example, falls over the top of the block very convincingly. Here you can get a bit destructive and throw balls at this flag. It breaks up fairly realistically, and if you keep going after a while, it breaks in two completely. The original PhysX cards never really took off, primarily because nobody really wants to spend money specifically on a card to do physics. However, now that it's integrated with the graphics, we might actually see some advances in this area. Who knows, in a year or two, Physics in a game might actually mean more than just stacking crates one on top of the other.